So how do you organize Kubernetes files? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about file organization, presumably in Git. So let's just say GitHub of YAML. I've seen it done lots of ways. It's a great question around do you, how do you structure the folders? And the number one way I see it is structured by app. And then all of the YAMLs for that app are in individual files per resource in one folder. So that app is up to what you define that as. I definitely don't see it where in a cluster, all the services of a cluster are in a folder for all these random apps. Let's just jump over to a demo. I might have a repo for this. So let's check out an example of what this might look like. So in this situation, I have a solution. Let's just call it a solution. It's three apps, three containers. Then you need to deploy that on Kubernetes. And you're probably going to need more than one Kubernetes cluster. You're going to need at least a test and production. That would be multiple clusters. So you're going to need maybe some slightly different settings, which means you're going to maybe need YAML for each environment. And those environments now I've just described at least three, one test one, a couple of production ones. And so when you look at something like Argo CD, Flux is very similar, but Argo CD is a GitOps app that takes all the YAML out of your Git repo and then applies it to cluster and then, or clusters because it can operate across many. And that goal is to keep those in sync. So as Git changes, it automatically updates to cluster, right? That's part of the rules or goals of GitOps. And so if I go into this repo, this repo is nothing but the YAML and the YAML, the Kubernetes YAML specifically, because I know there's, you've got lots of YAML, I got lots of YAML. So there's lots of YAML here. Let's think about how this app is going to deploy, right? So it's going to need different environments, pot potentially different database secrets for each environment. So I've, in this case, am using customize. My favorite way right now to use Kubernetes, custom YAML for my own apps. If I'm deploying some third-party tools like a Postgres database or a Prometheus, you know, for monitoring or some, or Loki for logging or something like that, I'm going to be probably using their Helm charts. But on my own, for my own apps, my own teams, if we're using internal source material, I don't recommend Helm. Helm is usually better for when you're deploying you're building your own app and you're providing it for others to deploy. I think that Helm shines there, but the complexity of Helm is mu usually unnecessary for internal teams, at least the ones I've worked with. So customize is my way to go. And what you'll see here is that we have the base YAML for one solution, one product with many, depends on what we want to call an app, with many apps inside it, right? And so all of the bait, what we're going to call the base YAML, it's generic. So we have a service. You know, these are all things that are very generic to the different products, the deployment for this particular one for the API. And you'll notice I kind of named it the name of the container or the name of what the pod or the service is going to be. So basically the name of the resource and then the resource type. All right. So I'm organizing all of the API container resources together just by alphabetical order. And then for each environment, we're going to create different settings. And because I'm using Argo here, we'll go into environments and we will have multiple, basically one folder per environment. And these environments will have overrides that will change whatever necessary settings. So customization here shows me what different overrides I'm going to state. So it's basically saying, hey, use these images that we specified from the actual base YAML for the app but we're going to use a new tag. They're not going to be tags like prod one and prod two. In fact, you should never put the environment in your tags of your images because images should be working across all environments. And this YAML is where we state for this environment, I want this particular image used. Oh yeah, also make me a config map of the SQL file because I'm going to import it into the schema of the database on startup. And that's for staging. And then if the next environment production needs different settings, which it probably would, we would define different configuration here. All right. So that's kind of a little bit of customized and a little bit of how Argo likes it. Argo likes to look at a repo. I like to put at, have a dedicated repo for my YAML. A couple of years ago, I was teaching a live course on Argo CD. Stay tuned for what we're going to do with that content. We might, we might do something else with it, but I love Argo and I sometimes take Argo and put all of its stuff 
inside of the repo with the YAML for the app. So it's basically a bunch of YAML, some for Argo, some for the apps. And Argo will look at that and watch that repo. The bigger your team gets, the more repos I'm going to advise to you. So I actually would define different designs of different repos of if you're a one person show, then you probably have your apps in different repos. You might even have a mono repo with multiple parts of your different apps with different container images being built all in different fold subfolders. But I always recommend your Kubernetes YAML be at least in one other repo separately. That way you're at least separating out what tools and permissions are used on that repo. For example, you might need to give Argo or depending on what YAML's in there, you might need some Terraform or, you know, something else that has access into that repo. And they have no business needing access to code. They just need access to configuration. So it's nice. I like from security perspective and permissions perspective to have my code over here that might have code scanners that need access, you know, like code QL or something like that, or some sort of automation for testing that needs better access. That happens over here in the code repo. And then a separate repo where I might have different access for infrastructure tooling like this YAML. I mean, that's how I do it. That's how I see teams doing it. If they're using customizers, they're using Helm. It tends to be more of like a Helm chart per repo. That's not always the case, but I do see that more often where the, the entire repo is dedicated to Helm. Uh, I think the biggest thing that I try to caution teams on is not to put all this YAML in the repo with their app. Their Docker file, that should go there with the app because that's usually very specific. It's build instructions. That file, along with the Docker Ignore and the Docker Compose, those are all for developers to download the repo, clone that thing down, build it, run it, develop on it, test it locally. Not all of us, I mean, some of us infrastructure people are testing locally with Kubernetes, but you typically don't need Kubernetes to develop. So don't muddle, muddle the waters with a whole bunch of other stuff. Plus, as your team gets bigger, I don't necessarily like all the action happening in one repo. <laughs> it's about all about concerns. If I'm a DevOps team or an ops team, if I'm having to make a bunch of PR requests into a repo where there's a software team developing on that software, I'm not in that team, maybe. There can be sort of clashes of permissions. There, there, it, there can be a little bit of extra effort and delay and maybe even a little tension because you know your infrastructure. You don't know the app. You maybe don't always want to be making PRs to an app that you don't run or control or are responsible for. So I tend to find that teams gel a little bit easier if they're breaking up the teams and separating infrastructure from app code and delineating team and organizational permissions, then that also makes sense for your infrastructure. You've probably heard this before, but we tend to see infrastructure designs and application designs even map or they are similar or represent the organizational structure of the organization that made them. So if you're a simple, small company and you have one team that does everything, then your design of your repos, the design of the different files in the repos, the design of your actual infrastructure and everything will look comparable to the organizational design. In other words, it'll probably all be one big bucket. If you're one small team, everything's in all the same places. But as you get bigger and teams start to split out, you will start to see your code, your infrastructure, your YAML all bifurcate into those different organizational patterns. The idea of putting all services in a folder is not something I've seen before, mostly because that sounds like an operator's viewpoint of, I want to look at my cluster and all the different teams that I'm deploying their apps for them. I just want to look at all the services and go find a service. That makes sense. However, most of this stuff isn't managed purely by ops. It's usually managed by teams of app developers that are in partnership with DevOps and ops. And so for them to have to manage or help with the YAML of their app and that app YAML be spread out a bunch, a whole bunch of different directories of which they're only maybe responsible for one or two files in that directory, that can get a little dicey. You can set up permissions in GitHub so that people can only change certain directories. But I don't believe, even if you could, and you might be able to in permissions and owner's files, you might be able to set up permissions so they can only change certain files. It would get a little dicey. That feels very complicated and burdensome. So I like to organize folder structures by infrastructure and by teams and their apps.